Hi people and hello my Chili Con Carnage crew, it's Chili here bringing you a special episode. We're going to be doing a ranking from worst to best in regards to System of a Down and their albums. This is a bit of a short list I guess because they've only got a handful of records and one that I really thought was going to be easy but actually is quite the challenge because when you're looking at it and there's only those handful of records it makes the list extremely difficult to analyze and stuff because System of a Down is a band that really has no bad albums I would say but they're not exactly a band full of albums either. But anyway, let's get into this one, and we're going to kickstart it straight from the top. Here we go with the worst record, and always make sure to write your list as well after the episode is finished. So the first one on the list is going to be the worst record, and I'm going to talk about really briefly here the single, Protect the Land, Genocidal Humanoids. This release came out ooh, about four years ago now, and I remember because it was massive news, System of Downs releasing new music, finally after some 15 odd years. And it was massive. I loved the first track of this one, Protect the Land. But the second track, yeah, it, it falls kind of wayside. And once everything subsided and the feeling of, oh my god, System of Downs releasing new music, all that kind of came to a close. It was left with these songs that weren't exactly spectacular. We're talking about a band, of course, that had been out of the loop I guess for so long and when you're writing music of this kind of nature you've got to be always proactive you've got to be constantly on the scene and you know I think um, Serge was interviewed about this and he said I've been out of the scene for so long I don't even know what to write anymore so you know there's a bit of stage fright I guess in regards to this clearly they had something to say when they're writing these political messages and whatnot but yeah, it's, it's a bit of an odd one. I guess it kind of falls down the category of, you know, last out, first in. So, you know, whatever. Here it is. And also, it's obviously too short. But it was a glimmer of hope. We, have, we all thought for a moment that System of a Down were about to release new music. Four years later, that's not the case. And also, multiple interviews by band members just going on and on about how they're really just fighting with each other. And, yeah, it's not very pretty. So, yeah, it's unfortunate. But... I just don't see System of a Down writing any new material, and f it sucks to hear, it sucks to say that out loud, but maybe that's also for the better, I'll talk about that at the end. So yeah, definitely going to put this one on the worst one, uh, Protect the Land, Genocide of Humanoids. The next one on my list is going to be Hypnotize. This was the last album that System of a Down has put out. The one that was part of the dual kind of release, if you will, Hypnotize and Mesmerize. And I remember it coming out very fondly because, like, you know, it was a massive release at the time, or at least the first half was. And then Hypnotize kind of just came out. It was there, it existed, it certainly had some tracks that weren't bad, but I never really connected with this record. And for me, this record just embodies chaos, pure carnage and chaos. It's like cocaine fuel chaos all in, boiled into one. And while System of a Down always walk that line of, you know, chaos and mystique, I guess you could say, they really teed it off way too far down the line. It was just pure um, visceral assault on the, the ears. It was pure noise, and I just really didn't appreciate how much aggression was within this record. You know, it's, it's just way too much. You're coming off with Attack, which was a really good intro track. I thought it was a really good one, but, you know, Dreaming, Kill Rock and Roll, yeah, you're kind of teeing off a bit more, and just all these other songs here that just didn't really like, I, I just didn't really like it. But, you know, She's Like um, she's like Heroin is a really good track, and Lonely Day, of course, which was a fantastic song. But, you know, all, all the other stuff, You Fig, Tentative, and all that, I just didn't really like. And I know a lot of people will obviously list this album a lot higher compared to what will be after this probably, but I think that this is their worst album put out to date. I just don't think the band were on a right connection, they were probably missing something and I guess too ambitious with what they were trying to pull off in the end. But anyway, Hypnotize came out, I do like the album cover, it's always going to have this awesome album cover, but anyway, I just think it's really not their strongest effort. I think it's their worst album they put out to date. Okay, I'm sure that this is the record that everyone would list as System of a Down's worst one they've ever done. Steal this album. But I think it's actually got some songs that are really endearing on here, and I think it really deserves another playthrough because a lot of people are missing out. They, over, you know, obviously the record that preceded this, Toxicity, 
overshadowed this record. And there's a lot of issues and stories behind this album and its release that really made it on the back foot extremely hard. Obviously Toxicity overshadowed the shit out of this record. And this was supposed to be Toxicity 2 by the way. So you know, just a little bit of information if you weren't aware. But System of a Down were always playing into these twos from back in the day. Now this track, or sorry this album I should say, it had to be released I think it, I, th I believe if I'm remembering this right, it was released um, on like LimeWire or one of those P2P websites. So they had to release the album a lot quicker than they anticipated. And on top of that, they also ended up just redoing the entire track list. Everyone thought they recorded a whole new album in the process. This wasn't the case. They actually just reworded every single album, I mean, sorry, every single track on this record. So every single track that you're looking at here was called something different. And I, I like the fact that they kind of play into this album a lot with Steel, this album it's called. And when you have the CD, it has no album artwork. It's just a blank cover. You know, so you can see the CD physically sitting there. And obviously Steel, this album written in what looks like texture. It's got the CD 36 at the mark. It just, it looks like a burnt CD. And I love that about the band, how they just played into this whole thing. So, yeah, I really appreciate the whole story behind this. I think it's probably worthy of a retro review. I might even cover it for a retro review sometime in the future because there is a really intriguing story behind it, as I've mentioned. But also, just a whole bunch of tracks here that I really love. Chicken Stew, for example, Boom, is a track that is massive that I don't think a lot of people like playing too much or just don't really go back to it. Boom is this mad track. ADD, Mr. Jack, I E A, sorry, I E A I A I O, and other songs like Highway Song as well. And Roulette, I thought was always, always this killer track. It was an amazing song to be hearing. So, yeah, there's a lot of tracks on here that are really stellar, really amazing. And I think it is for these reasons that this record stands above the one that I listed before. But, of course, what comes up next will be the one, you know, there's plenty of reasons why this one didn't go higher. But I think it's worthy of sitting here and not at the bottom of the ranking list. I don't think that deserves that spot. The next one on the list is going to be the self-titled debut record, of course, System of a Down that hand just coming at you it's such an ominous look and the fact that it's also been recolored for the remastered edition i think it just adds to this whole mystique you know surrounding the band and its release back in the day so this is 1998 i think it was what is it hollywood band are releasing this album and it is just a phenomenal record it's it's so different for its time for its era you got to keep in mind obviously new metal was on the rise and bands like you know corn and limp biscuit all these bands are starting to make it big. And then System of a Down comes in and just blows everyone away. They're not quite new metal, but they're kind of in that whole umbrella term, I guess you could say. They're definitely something, but they're bringing in all these different elements. There's the whole Armenian roots behind it all. There is the odd lyrics behind every single one of these songs, the political in plays and all the rest. And it's just such an amazing sound that just is perfectly encapsulated for the debut album and a fantastic record of course by system of a down it brings in this amalgamation of a man that clearly has an intensity about them and surrounds this whole identity of them and what they would become and you know when you go back and see some of the early footage from their concerts you can just see the energy within the crowd it's amazing to hear it's amazing to see going through this record is always fun and i don't really think there's too many bad tracks on here if anything I think it might be almost a perfect record. There's a couple of tracks, maybe towards the end, I don't know, maybe Qbert or Peephole, that just kind of doesn't get my attention, but of course you've also got No Sugar uh, Spiders, which I always love, that's probably one of my favourite tracks, maybe ever, that System of a Down has ever done. Um, War, always a killer tune, I love hearing that, especially when it's like right towards the end. And it's that echo, that war, 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 you know, and it builds up and oof, just goosebumps every time you listen to it. It's perfect. It's like System of a Down's War Pigs, 
you know, it's for them. It's the one that they did, and it's just really cool. So, yeah, I, I think the System of a Down debut record, it perfectly encapsulates the band, and it was, you know, showing us what was going to happen. Because, you know, <laughs> yeah, they have this fantastic debut record, but what comes after this is just, oof, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This one. And it, it, what, 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 more, what more can I say? It's such an awesome debut album. Perfect timing, maybe, but they also would carve out their own, you know, name within the industry. Of course. They are like the modern day Rage Against the Machine for the 2000s, I should say. So, yeah. Absolutely killer debut album. Probably doesn't get played as much as, you know, obviously what follows up. And if you are getting into System of a Down, or at least you know the big songs, I would really recommend to go back to this debut album because it's so damn good. Go on, go on, play it, play it. Ooh, now we get to the top two, and everyone's probably guessing what would be number one, but no, it's going to be a bit of a surprise here, because I'm going to put Toxicity in this spot, and I feel like it's only out of, I don't know, an obligation to the whole metal community that people would put Toxicity at the number one position. Hell, if I did this list two weeks ago, I would have put Toxicity at that spot, but then I was thinking about it over and over again, and I'm thinking... Do I really want Toxicity at the number one position? Yeah, look, I grew up on Toxicity. This was the System of a Down album that I got, you know, way back in 2001 when it was released. This is the introduction that I had for the band, like many others, I'm guessing, with Chop Suey. And that fantastic video clip, and of course, the amazing song that it was. But everything about this record is amazing. There is absolutely every reason why this should be in number one spot as well. There is... You know, I think people who are making these kind of lists and maybe put this one at the second spot would almost say it's an equal first. But I have my reasons for putting this one in the second position. You know, equal first. What can I say? But yeah, look, you begin off with the fantastic track Prison Song, just setting this whole standard for what messages are going to be alluding into here. Needles, Deer Dance, Jet Pilot, X. And of course, the big one, Chop Suey. Wow, the whole the, this this is the big one. This is the single that launched them into the whole stardom. You know, Rick Rubin really knew what they were doing in this record and did a fantastic effort to kind of push them into what they were going to be choosing. And you know, it, the fact that he just said, "Oh, you know, the story behind the the what is it, the angel wings or whatever in the lyrics." He just said, "Oh, yeah, put, pick pick um pick a book, any book in this whole library, open it up." You know, because um, Serge was having writer's block at the time. Should have prefaced that, but uh, should have prefaced with that one. But yeah, he was having writer's block at the time. He said, pick a book from this library, any book. So he picks up what was the Bible, I believe, and he goes, open it to any page, point to a line, and see if you can incorporate it into your song. So really, the whole line about, Father, I commend my hands into your spirit, that's, that's where he got the inspiration from. That just came from him from a book that he just randomly picked off the shelf. So any musicians that are out there, and if you have any kind of writer's block, you know, you don't have to have the inspiration within your mind. Maybe maybe look for outsourcing it. Have a look. See if there's something that can just bring you in. Because sometimes, just sometimes, you can get inspiration from the weirdest things. So, yeah, look, Chop Suey, absolutely amazing song. Still one part of the album that has... We're only talking about one track here. We've still got a few other ones here, so obviously you got Forest. Of course, we also have the track Atwa, massive song, this one, which is uh, Air, Trees, Waters, and Animals, which is, of course, from the philosophy of murderer um, Charles Charles Manson. So, yeah, you can, you can take that with a grain of whatever you want to take it with, because, yeah, look, Charles Manson has obviously been the inspiration for a lot of music when it comes to around about this era. My, you know, Marilyn Manson, for one. Um, he was a musician as well back in the day. Yeah, he wrote a song called Mechanical Animals, I think. And also, I think he hung around with the Beach Boys a lot, if I'm remembering right. But anyway, that's a different story, I suppose. So yeah, look, obviously Chops, his massive song, Atwa, is a fantastic song as well. The other ones that we should also mention are going to be Toxicity. One amazing song that is on this record that always blasts hard. 
But for me, it's probably going to be Aerials and that closing track as well. The combination of these two, you know, you've had this record that goes hard for most of its runtime there with some very, you know, short tracks such as X and Bounce and obviously Chop Suey, everything that you can imagine to get a mosh pit rolled up and going crazy. And then you dull it down with Aerials. And Aerials is like the second highest track played on this. No, it's not. It's the third, sorry. Third highest track played on this album. And I just love how they just dialed it down with this simple, you know, and um, this, this whole beautiful, serene kind of feeling with the whole record. This perfect little outro as well, once Aerials is completed and they've talked about how we're building walls and pretty much fucking up the whole ecosystem. And then it just would blow out with Artro, which I think was a hidden track at the time. I think it was combined with Aerials. And I prefer it that way, to be honest, because that's how it should be heard. You know, and it's this Armenian music outro that just really calms it down and brings it. It grounds the whole record. So, yeah, Toxicity is this perfect record. One of the best records to emerge out of, really, the whole new metal scene, I would say. You know, because, yeah, Toxicity is a new metal record. Easily one of the top 10 records. And I'm sure I put um, a list together of top 10 new metal albums of all times, and I'm Toxicity is on that list. It is definitely on that list. Because, yeah, it was a massive influence for me back in the day. So, yeah, Toxicity, big one. Of course, what can we say? We all love this record, but it wasn't my number one. How peculiar. So, we get to, of course, the number one spot. So, number one is going to be Mesmerize. This record, for me, is going to be my favourite for really one reason. And that was... When it came out, I remember this was the other record that I bought at the time, you know, the second record that I bought from System of a Down, after listening to Toxicity over and over for years, went out, bought Mesmerize, and I replayed this so many times. I ended up damaging the disc beyond to, you know, a state of being able to play the record that I had to buy a new copy. So I love this album. I played it to death back in the day. So when I'm list when I went back you know, doing this list of, oh, System of a Down and what albums, where should they sit? System of a Down's Mesmerize just held that special spot for me. I think it was this perfect crossroads, I guess you could say, where Toxicity was this massive influence for the band and getting them into the public, you know, um, zeitgeist. Mesmerize was this chance for the band to... I guess be at this crossroads where, yeah, we can continue down this path or we can try something different here. And they tried something different. They tried something very different. They went with this whole... Um, when I mean that, I don't mean that in the musical sense. I mean like with the whole idea of, hey, let, let's do a dual album. There's a bit of, you know, the obviously Mesmerize and Hypnotize was released in the same year. And I, I think that there was this overarching idea on it that they managed to do. And it wasn't... It's not a concept album by any means. But there is an overarching idea throughout these records. And even would influence bands like Limp Bizkit, who, <laughs> yeah, I know, Limp Bizkit, right? Yeah, so Limp Bizkit would even have influence on these records, because it was a massive record. It was, you know, when it was released, it went platinum five billion times, or whatever it did. But, you know, Limp Bizkit would also try to do the same thing uh, with their album, I'm just trying to remember, The Unquestionable Truth. So they were going to plan to do two records, and that just went to shit. And they just said, nah, we're not going to be doing it anymore. I think the band actually went on hiatus for a small period around there. So, you know, when you look at Mesmerize and the massive, massive, you know, track that was BYOB, Bring Your Own Bombs, it was just, of course it was going to blow up. Of course it was going to be a big one. But I like the whole, you know, Soldier Side intro, which obviously plays into the next album as well, but going through every single track when I was listening to this album again, there was not one track that I was skipping. And yeah, it's a short album, it's only 36 minutes, it's 11 songs, 10 if not including that intro, but there, it, it was it was not a dull record at all. You know, you blast BYOB, then you go into Revenge, uh, Cigaro, Cool in the cigarro, cigarro, cigarro. Yeah, it was a bit dumb in the lyrics, but hey, so Smile Down does that from, top, from time to time. Uh, radio, video, this cocaine makes me feel like I'm on this song. Uh, and, and it continues on. There are just all these songs, violent, 
pornography question. Um, Sad Statue, I thought was a really cool song. And Old School Hollywood as well, which I just love. You know, just this... I don't know, it feels it feels like um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood or something like that, but in a musical sense. It's just talking about all these old school actors and whatever in Hollywood. It's just awesome. And of course, it closes out with Lost in Hollywood, this perfect... Again, it, it's kind of like the Ariel's moment on Toxicity. It's a perfect way to close out the record. And I just love it. it. It's a short record. It's to the point. There is nothing flat about it on here compared to, you know, say, Toxicity, which maybe had one or two tracks there, which kind of made me think, yeah, maybe that one could have been skipped or left off the album. You know, or the fact that it's, you know, a bit, a bit of a longer record. But, you know, it, I, I just believe that Mesmerize for me was much more of a nostalgia hit. And that was the main thing. You know, Toxicity certainly made me a System of a Down fan. Mesmerize just had this bigger impact in my life. And that is the reason why I put it at number one. You know, and I think a lot of people would put this as equal number ones almost. Or at least in the second spot. Um, but I, I don't think I'm going to be alone out there in saying that this could be the number one for many fans out there either. I think Mesmerize might be actually a number one, or a sleeper number one, for a fair few people. Comment if it is, because I'd love to have some vindication. I want to know if this is your number one too. So that does it for this episode, and you know, thank you very much for tuning in. I would love to hear your thoughts. Make sure to comment below, write down your list of albums from worst to best for System of a Down, because of course, a band that we all love. You know, and I would, I was going to mention as well. Um, I just don't see the band releasing any new music, and this just comes from a whole bunch of interviews from rather recently as well, because you know, Sir just mentioned that he's had some back issues. Basically, he just wants to kind of take this... He wants to step away from the band. And it just seems like for years, despite the fact that they have reformed and been touring for some time now, um, it just seems like for years that he hasn't been happy with what they've been doing. The band seem to be fighting a lot at the moment, back like when they did in 2006. And, you know, from his, from his injuries, he just doesn't seem to be in that mindset. And if you're looking as well over the music that he has written in the past couple of years as a solo musician, I mean, he, he does a lot of um, movie soundtracks, which is orchestral. You know, even, I mean, it, you know, his very first solo stuff was pretty cool uh, with, um, what is it, Har Harakari or whatever, whatever that album was. It's some cool stuff. But then it goes into synth orchestral rock. Um, but the, what was it, the Unfinished Symph uh, Symphonies or something, Unfinished Symphonies, which wasn't a bad album, you know, it's the one with him in the suit, it's like two coloured suits, it's like this two-faced looking thing, but you know, it's, it's not a bad album, it's it's certainly one that's very intriguing, but it's, it's certainly one that I haven't played in ages either, so I don't think, you know, Serge has it in his mind to just, um, to write a new System of a Down album, I, I kind of get the feeling that to him, it's this mammoth effort to record anything with the band. And he knows the fact that anything that he writes for them, it's just going to be looked upon as, like, the past material was always better. It's this whole, like, Led Zeppelin feeling about them. You know, like, Led Zeppelin's had this run back in the day, and just like System of a Down, they had this absolutely phenomenal run back in the day. Then they stopped, and I think that adds to the allure of the band as well. And... I kind of, to be honest, I, I hate saying this out loud, but I want them not to tour. I, I want them to be left alone. Because I kind of, you know, if, if, the, if the band's mind is not in it fully to perform, then why would I want to see them? If they're not going to give their best and I'm paying money to see them, I don't want to in the end because it just feels like it's a lack. It's going to be this lackluster concert that I'm there just to see them perform the hits. And I kind of just get the feeling that instead we should just leave, you know, lying dogs sleeping or whatever the saying is. Uh, because at the end of the day, I, I, I just think that what they were as a band in the early 2000s was perfect for its time. 
and almost a bit of a flash in the pan situation as well and and it should be left alone to help the cause in the sense of like this is how music was it is awesome if you want to go back and listen to it or if you stumble across it but I, I think that if you leave it rather than you know tour and force yourselves to write music when you don't want to then it it won't um, it won't shit on your image I guess it won't ruin the reputation of the band it's better to end up being on a high like that you know you can look at Nirvana and obviously their reputation within the music community compared to someone like Alice in Chains yeah I like what Alice in Chains are doing now but if they had, if they didn't do it, if they made a whole new band and did their own thing, then that would be really cool too. And obviously, Alice in Chains' story would have finished back in the day. So yeah, look, maybe System of a Down are never going. I, well, sorry, System of a Down are never going to record anything. Mark my words. Um, and I don't want them to either. So it sucks to hear that out loud. But back to this one. Thank you for checking out this episode. I would love to check out your you know reviews and see what are your thoughts in regards to this list do you agree with me write your list as well and tell me your thoughts because as always it's always fun to talk about these bands and the music that we love from them all right you have a great day and stay spicy if you've enjoyed this content make sure to smash that like button subscribe to us and stay notified for future music related content because it keeps our manager happy at the end of the day we are also on discord instagram facebook and all those other social platforms if you want to check us out as always people you have a great day and stay spicy